Nina from VR Focus. I'm joined by. It's uh, Gareth Dell from uh, Fire Spray Games, and uh, I'm here to talk about the persistence. Tell me a little bit about the game. It's a kind of a creepy horror game in the middle of space, I suppose. Yeah, so it's a VR stealth uh, horror game, roguelike. Um, it's kind of first person shooter as well, set in space. Um, you're one of the surviving crew members aboard the Persistence. And um, it was a ship that was going to colonize a planet. And on the ship had a crew of seven and 800 uh, colonists who were stored as digital engrams, who were then going to be printed as clones when they got to the new planet. Now, there's been a problem on the trout and sport as they go into the planet. So there's a spark gap event and... What's a spark gap? It's, a, it's an issue when they're, they're doing the faster than light jumps. Then um, they've had an issue there and uh, they've ended up drifting next to a black hole. And uh, the ship uh, is basically going to go into the black hole and you've got to save the ship. So you've been saved by the ship's engineer and she's managed to save herself as well and she's backed herself up in the computer so she talks to you through the game and uh, she's like the voice in your head helping you through the persistence and um, she'll uh, guide you, tell you what needs to be done to repair the ship to get you back to Earth and uh, back to safety. So are you real or are you not real? You're a, a, a digital imprint of yourself? That's right, you're a digital imprint of uh, who used to be the security officer of the ship, Zimri, and you've been backed up in the computer by the uh, ship's engineer, so she can print you out using the clone printer on board the ship. You're like so a 3D printed human being that can be 3D printed the whole time. Exactly, yeah, so each time you die you can just be reprinted. So you're a 3D printed model of yourself, your security guard, and your objective is essentially to put the ship back together, the engineer is going to help you out, and there's different levels to the game as well, right? That's right, so there's four decks to the persistence ship, and uh, there's a different mission to complete on each of the decks. And then once you've completed all the missions on the de those decks, you then head to the bridge of the ship where you get to fire up the engines and actually make the jump back to home. But to get to that point, there's a whole, so whole list of things you've got to overcome. So there's uh, seven different enemy types uh, of mutants that you're going to encounter in the game. And then there's also some of the ship's defense systems as well that you're going to come across, as well as faulty, uh, faults in the ship that can cause you problems as well. So there's a number of uh, different challenges that you've got to come across it, um, across those four decks. Where did these mutants come from? What are these mutants? Surely uh, there wouldn't be mutants on the ship. Well, so the um, colonists who were going to the planet, they were all stored as digital engrams, much as you are at uh, the point. But their engrams got corrupted. And uh, so the clone printer on the ship is malfunctioning and it's printing out twisted versions of the colonist DNA. So that's where you're getting all the mutants from. And it just keeps spewing them out as uh, you're going through the game. So uh, the, all the decks are just filled with these roaming mutants. And uh, you've got to work out how you can get past them to actually fix the ship because uh, they're not going to be happy about you being there. They're going to try and mess with you. There's different ways of playing the game. There's a stealth way and then there's kind of like a hardcore just ramming in there. What, what are the differences? How does it play? So basically, uh, every time you die, you've collected a number of items as you've gone around uh, your previous life. You've collected currency, which you can use to buy weapons or to pay to manufacture better suits and uh, devices for yourself to use. Also, you've collected stem cells when you harvest the mutants. Um, you suck the stem cells out of them using your Delicious. stem cell harvester. It's lovely. <laughs> Equally, there's plenty of stem cells lying around the level that you can just pick, find and pick up. Now, you can use those stem cells in the DNA to level up your abilities. So there's four things that you can uh, power up uh, with the stem cells in the DNA you find. There's, you can increase your health. You can uh, make your character move more quietly. You can... Uh, in give yourself stronger melee combat so when you're hitting the enemies it's going to take less hits to kill them you'll do more damage and then you can also increase the amount of dark matter you carry now dark matter is used to power your teleporter so the number of teleports you can do before it's all used up or to power your super sense which lets you scan the room you're in to see for mutants or other things that might harm you in there so by power choosing which of those you power up you can sort of guide your gameplay so if you want to be the all guns blazing waiting there and just start punching things then you're gonna up your melee combat but if you want to sneak around and be stealthy you're gonna up your quietness maybe up your dark matter as well so you can teleport silently around the ship now the other things that you can collect are schematics for more equipment for your character to use so you can upgrade your teleporter you can upgrade the suit you wear um, and we've got a whole bunch of cool suits so some allow you to steal the health from the enemy as you attack them. Some give you better shielding and armor. 
others will help you move quicker and more quietly. So again, depending on the schematics you choose to make and manufacture, it can influence your gameplay. So you might want loads of armor, up your melee combat, and that gives you the super strong character and start going around with a load of guns. Or you might want to, to have the stealthy suit, moves quickly and quietly in a really good teleporter and go around playing it much more stealthy. And it, it's a di different people play a different way. You just here at the show, we see several different people, uh, different types of uh, play that um, people just come up with as they go through the game. It sounds very fluid, like almost everything's customizable, everything's always changing, and you have complete control power over, over that. Yeah, it's a, how you, you want to run the game, you do have control over. What you don't have control over is the ship. Now, the ship, it was, uh, it's uh, composited of uh, like little compartments. So the, the ship's um, configurated by a macro configurator, and that lets it rearrange its configuration of the rooms each time it, it, for whatever purpose it's trying to serve. And that's malfunctioned as well as part of the damage that's occurred. So each time you die, the ship completely rearranges itself. So the game is procedurally generated. So each life, it's a completely different game and a different world. So any fixes you've made previously persist to the ship, but the layout of the ship's completely different. So it's not a case of learn your way through it. You're gonna have to learn it every time you play. <laughs> always on your toes, always on your toes. Yeah. I would be so stressed out playing this There's game. There's no relaxing in this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how long is the gameplay in general? I can imagine me playing this for hours because I'd be like too scared to actually do anything. Uh, but it, it, how, how many how many hours do you play? We reckon that to get to the end of the game is probably going to take most people six to eight hours. Okay. Um, and it, you can play in small chunks because of the live die repeat cycle. It, if you prefer to play, you only get a small uh, chunk of time in your evening to play games. I certainly do. I've got a young daughter, and uh, so I only get a very small window where I can jump in, and I can play a couple of life cycles, and uh, in like 20, 30 minutes, and uh, that's a small little contained chunk, and then I'll just come back to it the next day. Or you can just sit down and play for it for, like say, six to eight hours and uh, work through it in a big session like that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It, it'll make you scream, definitely. Oh, God. <laughs> um, so this is specifically for the PlayStation VR or is it also coming yes. to other VR headsets? It's exclusive to PlayStation VR, yeah. And um, I think it's a 12-month exclusive deal that we've got at the moment. And then after that, then we may look to, at other opportunities here. Yeah. Uh, what is the release date for the game? What so are we looking for to come out? The game is going to be released on digitally on July 24th, so you'll be able to go on the PlayStation Store and download that at that time. You'll also be able to download the companion app that goes with the game, and uh, that's a tablet or, I or a smartphone game, and that allows up to four people to connect to the PlayStation, and then they can interact with the world. They can either guide and help the player in VR, or they can mess with him by dropping more enemies into the world, or luring the enemies that are in the world into the same room as the player and try and court traps for him and make his life harder. Or they could be nice, <laughs> if they want. <laughs> what was the decision to make a companion app? Because for PlayStation VR or VR games in general, I don't really hear a lot about companion apps. Well, it's a lot of VR games, they're quite insular because you've got the headphones on, you've got the headset on, and you're locked away in that little world. And it, you know, the persistence is awesome, played like that, it will scare you. But we also wanted to um, create a more social experience. And we've got the experience of having worked on other social VR titles. And we wanted to bring that to the persistence. And the best way we thought to do that was with this companion app. Because it, like I say, it allows up to four people that sat with you on the sofa to interact with the game. And the persistence played like that. It's a completely different experience. You have uh, like four mates around, you have a few drinks. And <laughs> you have four mates around, you have a few drinks, and uh, you're playing a uh, that is social experience and you can take it in turns in the VR or messing with each other on the app. It's just a completely different gameplay like that. But, and again, there's a, if you want to really rinse the game and play as best you can, if you're like one person in VR, one person really helping you on the tablet, that's it. you're going to be able to get all of the power-ups, identify where the weapons are and stuff, and you can really sort of help that player through. And it's a, a very good way to get that experience through the game. Is there a global leaderboard as well for maybe time, for how fast people can go? No, we haven't got anything like that at the moment. Uh, but uh, you know, that's not to say that's uh, something we could look at adding in either as part of the companion app or something on the website late, maybe later on. OK, and is this the first VR game that you guys have created? No, we, this is uh, actually the third that we've been involved with. Okay. Um, so we did uh, Operation Nightfall 
um, in conjunction with Sony, which was a US only release on the PSN store. And we've also been involved with other projects with Sony as well in the past. Um, so yeah, it's a, we've got a fair bit of experience working in VR, but this is the first title that's all us. Okay, and uh, yeah, so it's a big deal for Fire Sprite Games. Congratulations. <laughs> Are you doing any other VR games besides this? Um, uh, nothing we can talk about at the moment, but uh, yeah, we, we, we're definitely working on other projects and stuff at the moment. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled to the uh, social media feeds and stuff, and when we can talk about them, we, we certainly will. Fantastic. Is there a website that we can go to? Um, so we don't have a website dedicated to the persistence. We've got uh, firesprite.com which uh, you can find out information about the company, but if you want to uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. Go to vrfocus.com if you want to find out more about VR, and I will see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you.